I'm pleased to be here, and uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, Milton's uh, leadership to continue this uh, conference. And uh, uh, I'm more focused to uh, public benefit, not uh, private or uh, business or, how say, commercial business. And uh, the how say e effective effectiveness is not necessary, uh, but it must be practical. So patient is happy to pay more if uh, it is better uh, service of medical. And I will uh, have say, I prepared a slide, and uh, this is a lecture for two hours. Then uh, <laughs> I will talk like a two, less than 20 minutes. Then uh, maybe that will be, uh, uh, how say, fragile or fuzzy. But I want to give you some uh, idea. And first, uh, this is more uh, public uh, benefit things. Uh, Constitution for Human Life is a GHQ uh, 27, uh, 24. And uh, Article 24, in, this is just I read. Um, this is a constitution. In all uh, sphere of uh, life and the laws shall be uh, designed for the promotional and the ex extension of uh, social welfare and of freedom justice and the democracy, and the free, uh, universal, and uh, compulsory education shall be established, uh, because uh, medical is very, uh, has a need, medical has a need of uh, education of a patient and also doctors. The exploit of uh, children shall be prohibited. The public health shall be promoted. Social security shall be provided, and the standards for working conditions, uh, wages, and hours shall be fixed. I'm not sure uh, Obamacare or US care is going to a universal health coverage or not. It's an international trend. Everybody is going to UHC. So it's based on uh, like this con constitution. And the collaborative uh, community resilience is very focused for public benefit. It's achieving uh, living environment in which uh, healthy and uh, cultural life can be attained and building a disaster resilience healthcare infrastructure and creating a, this is number three is very important uh, creating a society environment which uh, disability can live independently in security and solutions therefore shall be uh, defeated scientifically and here is a telemedicine, collaborative telemedicine key framework. It's a all medical professional community shall support single healthcare needs patient and uh, lead it by prime doctors, a prime doctor, one guy. And the multi, multi level service in the collaboration, it means uh, like a doctor, nurse, physician, and uh, also healthcare assistants. And the parents trust doctors. This is one of the key of uh, people's life. And I will uh, explain about the more like a simple model. First one is a face to face with a profession and the license. And the prime uh, patient will come to see doctor first. And uh, because a uh, patient trusts doctor's capability, and the prime doctor normally respond if they are capable. But uh, most of the case, uh, we have said that prime doctor may be wrong or does not have uh, enough knowledge of a different category. Like a physician does not have a, like a skin or a cardiology uh, knowledge. So that case, uh, a doctor normally transfers a patient to the special, the, uh, has a special uh, expert uh, doctor or center. So, but in practically 70% uh, of a uh, patient transfer is not necessary. 30% is necessary, but uh, then uh, when doctor transfers a uh, patient to other doctor, it is a uh, life, it also have a uh, life risk of patient. It's very dangerous. Sometimes uh, we need to ask medical doctor, subject matter doctor to pick up the uh, patient or ambulance. Sometimes we do, but it's very rare. And the next one is a uh, uh, doctor does not, when doctor does not have a uh, capability, doctor try to find the subject matter expert doctor. 
So this is a telemedicine center. You can have a Pentagon scenes and uh, this is a telemedicine center. Telemedicine center does not necessarily to have an all expert. Uh, they are just a dispatch center. I will explain about the real uh, telemedicine center later. And the uh, prime doctor will ask contact to a telemedicine center and ask the special, special needs. Then the uh, telemedicine center will select the subject matter expert medical doctor, specialized doctor to support the front prime doctor. This is a mechanism or a process of telemedicine. And the next, uh, what it, when um, doctor should ask to other doctor support is uh, this is also an emergency situation. The if the case is uh, uh, come over the his capability, we should ask to uh, assistance from uh, other doctor. So this is a declarable emergency. And uh, FEMA and the U.S. president also have a declaration of uh, emergency. It's the same things. So so. They are not, uh, how to say, people are not perfect, but operational. And this is a life secured patient transfer. So when patient come to the doctor and the doctor get a supporting a subject matter expert doctor, and the subject matter expert doctor need, how to say, knows where this patient should go and he will pick up some trauma center or specialized medical center, then ask ambulance to pick a patient up. So patient don't need to call the ambulance. A doctor should call ambulance. This is a future of uh, some country we can do, but uh, some country we sh still cannot do. But this is a future of a uh, uh, beauty of a uh, patient transfer, and we can minimize the life life of patient. And this is a high-profile uh, collaborative surgery system. It's already running in Japan. And uh, we have an 8K camera. And the 8K camera have a wide view. And uh, that camera, uh, how say, we show the on big screen. But each uh, doctor have a small uh, terminal. And the small terminal can see a any place he want to see the patient look, have a place. So uh, if we use a old camera, um, camera will pan. If camera pan and uh, move, the other area, other people cannot see. So we sh try to make a wide range of a scope and uh, frame, frame it. And uh, so many people can access to one camera like a two, I'll say 100 doctor can access at the same time and give a advice to the how say this case a prime doctor is a sergeant and one guy on in a surgery room and other special doctor is in a conference room And here, a uh, backbone of a uh, doctor's network. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, telemedicine is a dispatch, not a uh, respond to all. So it's a kind of a chain of a how say, doctor's network. So uh, first response done by a prime doctor and the subject matter expert will be picked up by telemedicine center. And uh, also a trauma center, disaster medicine center, and also university hospital and scientific center is uh, connected to telemedicine center. And this is, uh, uh, this is already installed in Arizona state. And uh, in Arizona, there is uh, 20,000 medical doctor, and there is a uh, uh, telemedicine center with six trauma doctor and 30 nurse and administrator, and which covers all 20,000 medical doctors request. For example, a patient come to the west side and the prime doctor respond and he, he need assistance by telemedicine center and telemedicine center will uh, search and nominate, uh, select the subject matter expert, expert me, uh, medical doctor in has no, north in Arizona state. And the uh, prime doctor and the subject matter expert doctor will talk together and decide um, next action for a patient. 
And as you know, the, uh, this is in state, so we can use the same one uh, medical license, but the cross state or cross international uh, cross border, uh, as much as we have a, a prime doctor with a license uh, locally, it's okay, subject matter doctor, not necessary to have a license in that country or in that state. So in the uh, US, uh, you have a how say, separated regulation in each state. So this is one of problem, but uh, as much as we have a prime doctor on front, no, no problem. And uh, this is a team for Tokyo DMAT, Disaster Medical Assistance Team, and uh, this will be activated for Tokyo Olympic. Some people may come in 2020. So we are ready to respond. And this is a coordination network by uh, trauma doctors. And uh, next is a multi-level mission support and relay. And uh, as I mentioned, the uh, prime doctor is supported by uh, subject matter expert doctor. But uh, as much as possible, we, sh we should push uh, prime position to the lower or front, more front level. Like a nurse, if nurse is available, nurse is backed up by a uh, medical doctor. And uh, if we have a healthcare assistance, and he should be backed up by nurse and the doctor. So we can have uh, lots of uh, more, have some more uh, prat practical response and care for patient. And some people may be interested about uh, technology. And this is a new technology, or this, mathematically, this is very old. And uh, patient record is in a red book. And uh, this uh, patient record is archived to the medical data center. Then we have a server ABC, and we archive this uh, data, but uh, no, no encryption. So we don't need a decryption. This is just a diverse split information to several servers. So administrator of computer center cannot see this uh, data. So we can, uh, we can keep the privacy, but the real data is in a data center. And we don't need uh, anonymous the data also. And when we use this data, we just uh, use uh, like a social security card and uh, IC chip and uh, some print and the passcode and uh, what we want to know, like uh, Yuki's yesterday's blood pressure and send a message to data center and uh, just number 110 will come out. So you can see no privacy information is uh, come out from center. Only privacy information will go into the center. And uh, also at the bottom, uh, like a statistical uh, center, mo mostly a national service, will use this data center too. And uh, like, uh, how say, we can say age 30 and diabetics in California and send a message to the data center and data center will come out with just a number is 1,000. This also same, no privacy information is come out from a data center. And this is used for uh, AI. And the AI does not respond anything. And the AI need a statistical uh, report and the people need to drag, uh, drag or select the action item. Then AI will record. So AI is not uh, like a kind of uh, human. It's just a machine. So this is a mechanism of AI for medical. Oh, by the way, uh, everybody remembers uh, Fukushima, and Fukushima nuclear accident happened, and all healthcare record is now in, has, uh, recorded in like this data center. So it's uh, secured. And also we can share the information, but uh, we don't need a patient uh, privacy information to be shared. And this is also uh, another, how say, uh, this is a, a virtual clinic, or it's an on-scene clinic. So it's real, and everybody have a copy machine, right, in a hospital or a clinic room or a counseling room. And the copy machine is uh, installed, the medical record system and telemedicine system in the future, maybe uh, next year. We are now um, creating, we just ask uh, Xerox to build this uh, system. So it's under development. So 
it will be uh, handy and to access information and upload to the center. And this is another one. This is more operative op uh, operation of medical service and collaborative uh, high availability and uh, load balancing. You can see uh, how say the top chart is uh, like eight. Eight is a uh, uh, hour eight in the morning and the twenty uh, one is uh, nine in the evening. And the graph shows uh, how say availability or patient uh, load. How, how many patients come to the hospital or service? And over capacity line, always the urban um, medical center is go over the capacity. So we try to peak cut the transition. And we use, uh, how say, Japan is an island, many islands. Like um, we have uh, about uh, 4,000 islands. So islands are uh, medical center is not busy. So, but uh, we have uh, all professional medical doctor ready. So we try to use this uh, uh, how's a remote island and the mountain um, how's a medical center's workload to the urban city. And uh, also graph shows a uh, uh, difference of time gap and, and the remote island never leads to the over capacity. But uh, you may, some medical doctor is interested about the salary or how much earn. And the remote island medical doctor have more salary than urban doctor. So we try to ask them to work more. And this is a preventing medicine and the primary care. This is a, a, we can say a hobby health. It's a e-hospital. E so when we have a cell phone or a smartphone, when we click, it can be connected to the medical center or a trauma center. Uh, not not to a telemedicine center, and the telemedicine center will dispatch the how say that uh, how say li request to the any medical doctor available. So this is a uh, how say working hospital. And now uh, hosp uh, you you know the post post office is just uh, starting a medical service in Asia, like uh, Japan and the Philippines and those countries are starting. So this is uh, one of our uh, complex uh, community resilience architecture based on a uh, post office. Post office have a uh, normal logistics and uh, can, they can carry the drug and the postal service and the banking service, insurance service and e-hospital service and the medical service and the disaster response. All, all the function can be handled by post office. And the uh, post office have an uh, international standard. So, uh, so we try to reach to uh, how, so how to save the remote people which cannot take uh, much medical service. In urban area, we can go to the hospital easily, but the remote area, it's very difficult to go to the hospital. And this is more complexity of uh, bright futures. We have all architecture. This is more government-based. So hospital is a part of our function. It's very complex. <laughs> And it's a tax based. So core core uh, line is a tax. When we pay tax to the government, government must serve the medical service to the uh, citizen. And the, in Japan, uh, seventy percent is paid by uh, government, and thirty percent paid by insurance company and the private. So, but uh, in Japan, medical doctor don't need thirty percent. They can end up. So we can also do a. 100% full support by government budget too. And the disability people and the difficult disease people, those people are 100% covered by tax. And if we need more money, we can raise tax. And the Japan tax is uh, still not too expensive like uh, Europe. Europe is very expensive for healthcare tax. I think the uh, US is going or increasing tax or going to more insurance. This is a telemedicine for disaster scene or war, On March war zone. 4th, 2015, news came in of a huge explosion near Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. The city's coal mine of Zasyadko had collapsed, leaving dozens of workers dead and at least 14 injured. Six months later, in September 2015, near Lviv in western Ukraine, 
A gas explosion 300 meters below the surface causes local seismic tremors and traps five miners underground. Luckily, this time it is not a real catastrophe. It is the scenario for a major exercise involving 1,100 personnel jointly organized and executed by NATO's Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center and the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. How can an exercise like this help international teams to respond in a real crisis situation? We try to be as realistic as possible and try to simulate uh, real disaster situations. And in a major disaster, this is exactly the situation that you find yourself in, that international teams uh, come to the, to the disaster scene very quickly. The rescue has been further complicated by damage to critical infrastructure caused by the seismic tremors, which have left some major populated areas without utilities. Moreover, an alert is sent to the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear decontamination team due to a possible radiation leak to one of the vehicles following a major road accident. While rescue teams are pulling survivors from what could have been their tombs, time is running out for those still waiting to be saved. For them, there's just one hope, rescue as quickly as possible. In emergency medicine, the rule of the golden hour refers to a time period lasting for one hour or less immediately following traumatic injury, in which medical treatment optimizes the chance of survival. For the first time in an exercise, a multinational telemedicine system is being tested. Such a system ensures that medical experts located in other countries can provide precious medical support via satellite communications. From a, a pure, small, diagnosis from fractures, from trauma, to all the way to emergency operations. There is nothing outside medicine that cannot be done through telemedicine. Having help through telemedicine is an amazing feeling. And you save lives, no question about it. You will save lives. Specialists are one click away. We can, we can get them from anywhere on the planet. The Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko and the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg during his first official visit to Ukraine, opened this third consequence management exercise hosted by Ukraine. The leaders stressed how the rescue teams need to be even more prepared. NATO has been hosting these exercises for 15 years. Every year, nations come together from across the lines and from around the world, not to learn how to fight, but to learn how to work together in the to praxis and to save people's lives. So this is a real uh, telemedicine on scene in a very difficult place. And uh, this is a more practical. This more practical telemedicine and uh, on scene, it's very difficult to send a special doctor on scene. And we don't know what, what happened in a disaster scene, especially war zone. Uh, we cannot send in a war zone the medical doctor, but the soldier, we have a clinical soldier. So clinical soldier can do on behalf of uh, or guided by uh, telemedicine uh, special doctors. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Is there any questions? So it's very interesting that uh, the content actually. The one simple question: Why did Japan use uh, the post office set up uh, for provide telemedicine? Uh, do do the Japan have a uh, no community health center or like uh, the village the clinic or? What's the purpose of the uh, post office? That's the my question. Thank you. And, uh, post office, uh, Japan post office have a uniqueness, and uh, lots of people save money in a post postal bank, and that the bank uh, has the money will go to a direct investment to infrastructure like a medical service, and it's direct to the uh, not patient citizen, and other function is uh, has an indirect. Uh, benefit for citizen is a bank interest. And we try to copy that the concept to Philippines and other developing country. And, and the post office have a last resort. So uh, anywhere in a remote area, we have a post office. It's by uh, international post office guideline. 
we must deliver the uh, mail in one day. This area because mm -hmm. you go to the public area to do like uh, this kind of a disease related mm -hmm. and uh, careness sometimes is not a uh, good idea. That's my yeah, concern. Yeah. So, post office uh, has in the same place, they, they are planning to have a clinic and uh, now hiring a medical doctor and also pharmacist because uh, only post office can deliver the pharmacy or drug to the home. We are changing, but uh, still re regulating. So uh, thanks so much for your talk, and um, congratulations on your, your social mission. I think it's, it's um, really admirable. And um, I, the question I had, uh, a couple things. We, we're interested in doing something like this with our company uh, as we grow and sort of providing social um, you know, support. But are there international laws that prevent uh, U.S. physicians from providing care overseas for disaster relief, or is that, um, can we do that? Uh, uh, not only Japan, all countries have a regulation, and uh, we must have a local medical license. And the subject matter expert or telemedicine doctor can be anywhere. No regulation for that. But okay. they must have a local doctor. So if there's some emergency in South America, for instance, and we wanted to provide fracture care, we could do that via telemedicine without any problems? Uh, no problem. Oh, great. Thank you. And uh, you, you remember the 311, uh, 2011, we got the Sendai big earthquake. That time, uh, lots of medical doctors come to Japan, but right. cannot do anything. So uh, medical doctor allocated to build a house. Uh, I don't have a question, but I'm just giving a follow-up answer to your question. Uh, I don't think in most parts of the world that in case of disaster, you are required to have a license over there. Um, one prime example was a big earthquake in Himalayas in 2005 when there were multiple hundreds of thousands of casualties and uh, injuries. And doctors from around the world were over there, no questions asked, and they were providing services in camps. So you don't, uh, nobody was required to have a license for that. Great, any other questions? All right, thank you so much, Yuki, thank for the great talk. <clears throat>